So in the last video, I talked about my testimony, why I became a Christian, how it happened, uh, what went on in my life to make me decide. And it was clear that I'd just come to, I'd looked in my heart and seen my own wickedness. God had shown me that and that I needed a saviour and needed Jesus Christ in my life. So basically this video isn't going to be about how I became a Christian. I've already covered that. It's going to be about why I believe being a Christian makes sense. So basically there are three truths that, uh, that are likely to be true about God. Either he is, exists and he's divine. Either he exists and he's not divine, or he does not exist. Now, Christians usually believe that God exists and he is divine. A lot of people have a problem with the Bible because the Bible, uh, well, basically the things that God did in the Old Testament and stuff like that, according, according to our comprehension, we cannot understand it. The killing of babies, slavery, just to name a few person being great and um, instead of angels going out and being great you know these sort of things are very very difficult and, and and I must admit they make me feel very uncomfortable but I still trust God because I believe in God's divine nature he has a reason for these things that are above my comprehension now many atheists who might watch this video might say well that's convenient isn't it you just just wash it away with faith well it isn't quite as, as clear as that. I mean, I always say that if I got to the gates of heaven before Jesus and found out that God was not divine, how he existed and he was powerful, but he was not divine, then I would be sticking two fingers up him as well, as well as atheists doing that, and you'd have to save me a seat in hell along with, with the atheists, because I cannot believe in a God who is not divine, who is there but not divine. Because God's, everything hangs on God's divinity. If God is not divine, he must be able to be understood by our own comprehension. And if that is the case, then there's no way anybody would believe in him. No one would. No one would believe uh, in God if he was able to be understood by our own comprehension. So believing that God is divine is a case of believing that the things he does, the things he says are beyond our comprehension. Now, somebody in a video, an atheist, raised a very good point. Why would God give us a Bible that appears to confuse and whatnot uh, if he is divine? You know, why can't he in his div divinity make the Bible easier to understand and less confusing? Well, that's because the Bible itself is divine. It's the divine word of God. Essentially, we are not divine. We cannot understand because we are not divine. It, it's useless trying to say, well, why couldn't God make it so we can understand? We can't understand. We're not divine. But if we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, we we might not still understand, but we are one with the element, with the Bible, essentially. That doesn't mean that I'm okay with, with the things that happened in the Old Testament. That's not what I mean. But the main crux of the Bible is Jesus saves. Jesus died, Jesus rose again, and Jesus saves. So these, this, makes my this is the foundation of my faith. I always said the, the only way I could become an atheist is if one of the following were true. Either God is not divine, or Jesus is not God, or there is no resurrection. I have to believe that God is divine, Jesus is God, that Jesus rose from the dead. And I believe all those three things passionately with all my heart. If anyone can prove one of those three things wrong, I will join you in the dance of atheism. There's no point in believing in God, not even believing in Allah or, or, or whatever, or Buddha or whoever. There's no point in believing any God, uh, including the Christian God, if God is not divine, if Jesus is not God, or there is no resurrection. Because all those three things are true, Jesus saves. Now, you're probably asking, well, hold on a minute, John. How do you know those things are true? How do you really know? Well, it says in Scripture that Satan would be overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Now, the blood of the Lamb is pretty self-explanatory. Jesus' blood covers us. But we have to have faith to believe that we don't have evidence of the blood of the Lamb other than through faith. But the testimonies of others are tangible. They are there. You go on the internet, you go on YouTube, and you type in 
Jesus saves or Jesus delivers or Jesus sets free, you will have loads and loads of videos of people converting from Islam, people converting from atheism, uh, Hindus converting. You will have all these people converting to Christianity with their thing. Now, if I'm going to be an atheist, if I was going to be an atheist about it, I would have to believe all those people are either lying or they're lunatics. But that would make me very bigoted, would it not, to believe that thing? So we've got to be very careful here. So there is evidence. It may not be the evidence that atheists want, but it's evidence never, nevertheless. I cannot refute that the, the many testimonies people have of meeting Jesus and they're having their lives transformed by him. And they are very clear that it's Jesus. It's not an act of their own will that they're calling Jesus. It is Jesus setting them free. And the thing is, is if I didn't see evidence that Jesus sets free, that would be a real deal breaker for me as well. That would be something that I'd be thinking, OK, well, maybe this is just a, a fairy belief and it's not real. But I have seen pe real people get set free. I've seen demons get delivered. I have seen people get set free. I've seen people come and, and, and say, I no longer smoke this or I no longer do that. Um, you know, it's all right to say pe people who have already been Christian and such, like myself, who say set free. it's OK to sort of... You know, say, oh, well, we don't believe in that because you were raised and could be indoctrinated in the church. I understand that. But when you've got Muslims, Hindus, atheists converting to Christianity, and you only have to look on YouTube to find these people, it makes you wonder, it makes you think, well, hold on a minute. God is divine. It may be convenient to say God is divine, but just because something's convenient doesn't mean it's not true. Doesn't mean it's not true. So... You know, even if you could look in my own life and my own testimony and say, well, the times when I saw a demon, you just saw uh, something from another dimension, or even some people might say I made it up, or whatever else, or, or I, I had a dream where I saw things. You know, you, you have your, your opinions. But the people that, that know that Jesus has worked in their lives, they know that it's happened. So that, that's another reason why I, I am a Christian, is those testimonies are very powerful. Uh, of God and that if I was going to argue with an atheist that's that's the main point of my argument that that how can my lived experience of seeing all these people get set free by Christ make me doubt you know why would I doubt that it was the truth the way the truth and life because a real stumbling block to everyone is Jesus it's Jesus he's a stumbling block you know, he is the one that, that makes people think hold on a minute there's truth in this the power of Jesus now, the other thing that, that causes me to, to believe my faith is true is people cursing the name of Jesus Christ. Even if non-Christians say, well, it's not blasphemy because there's no such thing as blasphemy. It's something. Why are you saying, for Christ's sake, and Jesus this and Jesus that? Why, why are you saying that and not also saying for Muhammad's sake or for Allah's sake or for Buddha's sake? Yeah, why, why, why only Jesus? Why are you only swearing in Jesus' name? Surely it's because there's power in the name of Jesus, and you know it. And the thing is, if, if that's not the case, why are you swearing in his name? Why? It does not make any sense to me. And that is why, another reason why I believe my faith is true, accurate and correct. The other reason, and the last reason I'm going to leave, leave with you, in general, whenever you mention the name of Jesus, it immediately causes offence. No matter what it is, it immediately calls something in, in the person to be offended and angry about it. And they, they, you can mention about God, you can mention about prayer, but as soon as you mention Jesus, there is anger and, and aghast and, and, and a negative reaction. And that is another big show, show or sign that Jesus is alive, Jesus saves, and Jesus is the Son of God, and indeed God incarnate. So that is the end of my video. I hope that's uh, made it clear as to why I believe my faith makes sense. Okay, bye-bye for now.